morning, all, and I invite you to stand and join with me in our call to worship. In a world riddled with false promises, we gather around Jesus, the one who satisfies the longing of every human heart. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry again. Whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Jesus, we come to worship you today. We come to sing, pray, and listen. You always hear us. Help us to hear you. Amen. And let us raise our voices to the Lord. We bow down and worship Him now. How great, how awesome is He! And together we sing. Everyone sing. Holy is the Lord God Almighty. The earth is filled with. Your cross, 
cross and your cross It draws me to your heart It makes my spirit sing It makes my spirit sing Your grace, your grace So I hear it on my name I'm waking up to sing I'm waking up to sing We will sing and shout, yeah Sing and shout Open up our hearts and pour your praises out We will sing and shout, yeah Sing and shout Open up our hearts and pour your praises out oh, oh, oh. Because you're looking down, it makes me want to sing, it makes me want to sing. Because, because, because you call my name, I'm waking up to sing, I'm waking up to sing. We will sing and shout, yeah, sing and shout. Open up our hearts and pour our praises out. We will sing and shout, yeah, sing and shout. Open up your hearts and pour your praises out. What could be better than a grace that washes all away? What could be better than your great love? What could be better than the grace that leads us home and makes a way? What could be better than your great love? What could be better than the grace that washes all away? What could be better than your great love? What could be Open up our hearts and pour our praises out. We will sing and shout, yeah, sing and shout. Open up our hearts and pour our praises out. We will sing and shout, yeah, sing and shout. Open up our hearts and pour our praises out. We will sing and shout, yeah, sing and shout. Open up our hearts and pour our praises out. Our God, you are always more ready to give your good gifts to us than we are to seek them. And you are willing to give more than we desire or deserve. Help us to seek that we may truly find, so to ask that we may joyfully receive, so to knock that the door of your mercy may be opened to us through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. You may be seated. Well, good morning, church. And welcome to worship this morning from Old Noma Presbyterian Church. So glad that you're here with us as we gather around Jesus to hear good news about a God who loves us. My name is Danny. I'm the pastor here at NPC. I want to welcome those of you who are worshiping with us here in person. I also want to say a special welcome to those of you who are with us online as well, worshiping with us from home. We are so glad that you are here and uh, we hope that this service really does stir your love and your affections for the Lord Jesus. I have a few announcements that I just wanted to get us started with today. The first of which is that last week, our adult Sunday school ministry started back up, and they are meeting in person here at the church, and all are welcome to, to come and be a part of that. You can jump into that um, study anytime you would like. They meet at 9.30 Sunday mornings downstairs in room 107, 108. So every Sunday morning, 9.30 a.m. adult Sunday school here at MPC. Um, also wanted to, to let you know that a few weeks from today, we are planning an event for, for Halloween. We did this last year where we did a, a, a trunk or treat event out in our lower parking lot. And we're planning to do that again. And this year, Halloween falls on a Sunday, which is pretty cool. Uh, so right after worship, we're going to have an event down there for, for families. All are welcome. And uh, if you would like to, to pitch in and, and help and park your car down there and be a part of uh, of distributing candy to the kids that day, uh, we would really love to have uh, to have your help do, doing that. 
Um, so, uh, so just keep that in mind. You'll get more information about that in the coming weeks, but uh, October 31st, right after worship, will be a trunk or treat event here at MPC. Also, lastly, if you are a guest with us in worship, we're so glad that you are here with us today, whether in person or whether virtually as well. We do have these blue Connect cards that you're welcome to fill out. And if you're with us online, you can text Connect MPC to 94000. That's Connect MPC to 94000, and you'll receive a virtual visitor card uh, right on your phone. So uh, for each one of those cards that we receive, we make a donation to, to Neighborhood House, one of our local mission partners, uh, right here in, in Multnomah village. And now um, I would like to take a moment and just introduce today's children's lesson. Uh, So for all of our young worshipers, both here in the room and for those of you that might be watching from home, um, I want to direct your attention to the screen uh, where today we will have a a very uh, special children's message, a very special edition of of Valentine and Silas's Laboratory. So I'd like to direct your attention up to the screen. What's wrong? Why aren't these were glowing? I taped all these glow sticks to my guitar, and yeah. they were glowing yesterday, and now they're not glowing yeah. today. Well, I mean, the glow sticks, they don't last very long, do they? No, I no. guess not. But, you know, they're still fun. What's even the point? What do you mean? They What's looked the... really, I mean, they looked really good, but now I have to tape them off, and I mean, I don't know. I just don't feel like doing it anymore. You don't feel like doing the lab anymore? Yeah. How come? It's just not the same anymore. Not the same without Silas. Yeah. Yeah, I know what you mean. You know what? Why don't we step away for a minute and get together with the rest of the crew and see what we want to do? Okay. Okay. So we started trying to film the lab, and Val was having some trouble. I was having a little trouble. What? What was going on? I just don't think it's going to be the same anymore if we just keep making the lab. And so, you know, we should just take a break for a little while because I'm kind of sad and I'm kind of mad. Um, Yeah. 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 I'm sad and mad that Silas is gone too. Doesn't seem fair or okay, does it? No. And you're right. Everything is different right now. And it's probably going to be different forever because we're going to miss him forever. But um, besides our sadness, I think also we're really lucky that we got to have Silas. Yes, we are. And he brought us a lot of light in a really dark time, didn't he? Yes, he did. We were at home and separated and... He did all those fun things for us on camera and off camera and just brought us a lot of light and a lot of joy. Unlike the glow sticks, right, that they lose their light and then they're no good. Silas's light of the joy and the love that he brought us is never going to go away. Ever. Ever. Even though he died and he's gone. And you know, we have some amazing memories that along with our sadness will hopefully bring us some joy. Like, do you have any favorite memories of our time in Silas and Val's lab? My favorite memory is... Just don't, don't open it. Don't open it. Just look into it. Look into it, Silas. Can't see Val. Oh, okay. Just, just say, you don't have, he doesn't have to be there. Just look at the camera. He's supposed to say, hey, Val. Hey, go! <laughs> That's a really good one. What about our camera crew? Do you guys have some favorite memories? I really liked when he closed the laptop in the Zoom episode. I thought that was really funny. We need to keep working on that project so we can go back and see what the church was like in the olden days. <laughs> Him closing the laptop in the Zoom episode is one of my favorite memories. And you know what one of my other favorite memories is? I mean, a little known secret of filming Silas and Val's lab is that um, 
he wouldn't do it without M&M's. This like, was the secret. Yeah, until we strange. created Silas's lab, while it was still just Val's lab, he would only be a part of it if he got M&M's. And then once it became Silas's lab, he was happy to do any of it. Yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> so we are going to be sad, probably forever, but we're also going to find joy when we remember all the amazing times we had with him and just how amazing he was. But you know what, Val, you haven't shared with us your favorite memory of Silas in the my, lab. My favorite memory of Silas in the lab is all of it. Yeah, I think you're right. All of it. Valentine's Laboratory I'm really just so grateful to the Haynes and the Hellmans for, for putting that together for us today. Uh, I know that um, many, many folks have reached out and asked about if there are any plans for a memorial service for, for Silas. And I just wanted to let the community know that we are planning one for the afternoon of October 23rd. And we'll be sharing more about that in the coming days. Uh, but wanted to let you know that um, the, the Haynes have, have a, lots of family members, so the, the in-person component will be um, for, for family here, um, here at MPC, but the service, thankfully, will be live-streamed so that uh, friends and neighbors and church family near and far uh, can be a part of that gathering. Um, so we'll be, we'll be letting you know um, specifically how you can be a part of that and how you can... Uh, be supporting the Haynes family in this very, very difficult time. So I want to take a, take a moment now in our service to do what we were created to, do, created to do, which is call upon our Lord, our loving and, and gracious Father who knows us, cares for us, um, and calls us by name. So let's, uh, together as one family of faith, let's uh, go before the throne of God in prayer. Good and gracious God, we do thank you for, for this place and for this time to come before you and do, Father, what we were created to do, at which is worship you. God, you created us for your glory. In, in, the, in the beginning, it says that you created everything that is, and you saw, Lord, that it was good. Lord, we do just rejoice that you have created us in your, in your image. And God, as we, as we come before you in this time of worship, we ask, Lord, that you would forgive us, that you would forgive us for thinking small thoughts of you. God, that you would forgive us for the times and moments in our lives when we confess you with our lips and yet deny you with our actions. God, we come before you 
longing for the, the grace, the mercy, the restoration that only you can give, that only you can provide. And God, thank you that your grace is sufficient. God, your grace is sufficient for us. And God, as, as we come before you in this moment of prayer, we, we just lift up to you the, the burdens that we are carrying this day. We lift up to you, Father, all that we have. All that we have, Lord, we, we bring it into your presence. And we thank you, God, that you, are, that you are big enough to handle all of that. God, we come before you on behalf of a tired and weary and broken world. God, we ask that you would bring comfort, God, to all who are mourning. That you would bring relief to those who are suffering. That you would bring peace, God, to places that are just torn apart by strife and violence and conflict. God, we ask that you would do what only you can do. What only you can do, Father. And your word tells us that you are in the process, Lord, of restoring all things and reconciling all things and all people back to yourself. And Lord, on this day, we do pray for those in, in our world, for those around our country, for those in our city. We pray for those who don't have enough. We pray, God, for those who don't have enough food, for those who don't have enough clean water, for those who don't have enough shelter. God, we pray for those who don't have enough joy or enough hope. God, we pray for those in this world who have never heard your name. God, we pray for the, the vulnerable here in our city. God, especially as the rain begins to fall and the temperatures begin to drop, God, I pray uh, for those who have no place to call home. And I ask that by your creative power and by your grace that you would provide food, that you would provide safe places to sleep. God, we ask that your grace, your mercy would continue to be poured out upon this world. And help us to see, help us to know where we can be a part of that story. And God, as we pray, we do so as always in, in a spirit of hope, trusting that you are leading us toward that day when justice rolls down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. To you, O oh God, we give honor, we give praise, we give glory. We give it all to you because you alone are worthy. And we ask all of these things, Father, in the strong, powerful name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who knows us and loves us. In your name, Jesus, we pray. We invite you to stand and sing with us as we sing this hymn of heaven. It's a hymn of hope.
Let's pray together. O oh, good and gracious and, and faithful God, we ask that you would look upon us now as we, as we come to your word. We ask that you would speak to us today. Father, that you would speak to us loud, that you would speak to us clear, that you would speak to us a word of hope, a word of promise. Speak to us, God, a word that our hearts are longing to hear. And I pray that by the power of your Holy Spirit, God, would you take these words, would you take these ancient words, take this message and, and carry it deep into our hearts today that we might know you more, that we might love you more. And it's in the powerful name of Jesus Christ that we pray. Amen. So over the last month or so, we have covered quite a bit of ground in our worship series on the, the Lord's Prayer. And this was the prayer that Jesus taught his followers, the 12 disciples. And when Jesus taught the disciples this prayer, that it was, not, it was not a suggestion on how to pray, but Jesus clearly said, he said, when you pray, pray like this. Jesus commands his followers to, to pray 
these words, to say these words, and, and I believe that, that he meant it. And the Lord's Prayer, uh, which is a, a very familiar prayer to many of us, um, it can really be divided. It, it it's, uh, has a particular form and structure. It can be divided into two distinct parts and two sections. And part one is really focused on exalting and honoring God. Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Holy is your name. In the first part of the prayer, we give voice to the fullness of who God is, his character, his, his nature. We call upon God as a loving father who hears us, knows us, and cares for us. We pray, thy kingdom come, Lord, thy will be done. We acknowledge the sovereignty of God. We acknowledge his lordship and his rule and his reign over our lives and over this world. Part one of the prayer is about giving God his due, remembering who God is. This morning we begin our walk through part two of the Lord's Prayer. And in the latter half of the prayer, we we bring before God our own needs, the needs of the community. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation. Deliver us from evil. And today, our, our focus will be on the fourth petition of the Lord's Prayer, which is give us today our daily bread. Give us today our daily bread. Now, daily bread, it's not really language that we use anymore. Um, So I want to take a moment to really just unpack what this prayer actually means, what it actually means to pray for daily bread. And I want to look at a few different translations of Matthew 6, verse 11 here, so you can see those up on the screen. Um, as you can see, the, the NIV and the King James translations, they, they, this is kind of familiar to us. This is the way that we're used to praying this prayer. Give us today our daily bread. Um, and one of the translations that I reference quite often, the New Living Translation, puts it this way. Give us today the, the food that, that we need. So that's bringing it more into our, into, our, um, into our own language. But Eugene Peterson takes it a step further in the message where he translates this as, as keep us alive with three square meals. Give us today our daily bread. Give us the food that we need. Keep us alive with three square meals. I think these, it really does illustrate what it means to pray for our daily bread because when we pray this prayer, and we're, we're not asking God for excess. But we ask of him, Lord, just give us enough for today. Just give us what we need to live, no more and no less. You know, when it comes to this petition in the Lord's Prayer, this prayer for daily bread, um, it is widely believed that this prayer is an expression of dependence and trust. That this is a prayer of dependence and trust. That it's giving voice to the reality that we depend on the Lord to meet our daily needs. And that every gift, that every blessing, that every provision that we receive comes to us from the hand of God. You know, there's this story in the book of Exodus chapter 16 where God's people, the Israelites, are, are wandering in the desert. And it's not long before they begin to complain about the lack of food in the wilderness. And they begin to get rather upset with Moses. The Israelites are, are getting a bit hangry, as we might say. And, and God's response to them w- was to rain down bread from heaven. And the people were given very specific instructions. Right, that each day... They were to only gather the bread that they needed. They were to only gather what they needed for the day, no more and no less. And so every day in the wilderness, the people had to go out and gather bread in the wilderness, trusting that God would meet their needs. And surely enough, he did. They, They always had enough. So this is the interpretation that, that I most often hear of Matthew six eleven. that praying for daily bread kind of brings us into a posture of dependence, right? To a place of trust that God will supply what we need for each new day. And, and I think that's absolutely true. But f- for this morning, I, I actually want to look at this prayer, at this petition from, from a slightly different perspective. Because the fact is, church... 
fact is that not everyone in this world has what they need. And this is a harsh reality of life in our broken world. Not everyone has what they need. There are hundreds of millions of people across our world who don't have enough to live. The worldwide, it's estimated that about 1 in 10 people go to bed hungry each night. That's about 800 million people. And the pandemic is causing these numbers to rapidly increase. The COVID-19 has created and is creating just this epidemic of hunger around the world. And, and this is not a faraway reality. This is not just something that's happening in the developing world, but it's, it's here. It's right here where we live. In tw- 2020, about one in nine Oregonians faced hunger and also one in seven children. And, and I said this a few weeks back, but I think it's worth saying again here that the Lord's Prayer is not a me prayer, but it's a we prayer. The Lord's Prayer is not a me prayer, but it's a we prayer. It's not, Lord, give me what I need. Give me my daily bread. But it's give us today our daily bread. This prayer is not just about us, but perhaps, that perhaps in praying for daily bread, that God is seeking to direct our hearts and our attention to a hungry world. That by praying for daily bread, perhaps God is seeking to direct our hearts and our attention to a hungry world. Lord, give us, give this whole world, give all of us today our daily bread. Author and professor Daryl Johnson puts it this way. He writes in his book, he says, To pray the fourth petition of the Lord's Prayer is to enter into solidarity with the whole family of God. Give us, Father, my family, but also my neighbor's family, and the, the Lopez family of Guatemala, the Kim family of Korea, the Lee family of Singapore. Give us is the logical extension of our Father. The us keeps the prayer from self-centeredness. The us keeps us socially aware. The us makes us kingdom conscious. So as a, as a father of two young children, among other things, I make a lot of sandwiches. It's actually a pretty sizable role of sizable portion of my role as a dad is sandwich making. It's kind of a, it's kind of a big deal. Like, I don't want to brag or anything, but I, I can get like a PB&J on the table in like 60 seconds. And that's with cutting the crusts off and everything, you know. So, um, so it's, kind of a, it's kind of a big thing. And, and needless to say, we go through a lot of bread in our house. And every so often, I'll, I'll grab the bread out of the fridge and I'll see that we're actually running a little bit low Right? And I think most of you kind of know what I'm talking about to the point where all that we have left is the, uh, is the heels of the bread. Um, I actually found out recently there's this very spirited national debate as to what these are actually called. Where, I'm, where I come from, they're called heels. You may call them something else, but you'd be wrong. Um, so I, I come and I, and I get this out of the fridge and I see that all we have is the heels. And these are perfectly edible, perfectly acceptable slices of bread But all of my life experience suggests that nobody likes eating the heel of the bread. Because more often than not, what happens is these actually end up um, in my garbage. Because I know that that I've got a whole other loaf in the fridge, or I've got a whole other loaf in the freezer or somewhere, and I want that stuff in the middle. Like, I don't want the heels of the bread. And it's a very simple thing that that I do. And, and I've done it for my whole life, and something tells me that I'm probably not the only one. But in some way, what this reveals is that in my life, for me, that abundance has always been the norm. That in my life, abundance has always been the norm. That I've always had enough. I've always had more than enough. I've always had more than enough bread and more than enough funds in my bank account, more than enough health coverage, more than enough square footage in my house or my apartment. And I suspect that that most of us hearing this, and maybe not all of us, but most of us have lived lives 
of abundance, where we've always had enough. We've always had more than enough and more that we really, than we really need. And I wanted to share with you today a prayer that, that comes from, from Latin America. And I'm not sure of the precise origin of this prayer, but it's a very well-known prayer. And, and I thought about this as I considered what it meant to pray for daily bread. And the prayer says this. It says, O oh God, to those who have hunger, give bread. And to those who have bread, give the hunger for justice. To those who have hunger, give bread. To those who have bread, give the hunger for justice. So church, when we pray, give us today our daily bread. We are doing far more than just praying that God would meet our own needs, that our needs would be met. But we're also giving voice to God's desire and God's vision and God's hope that all who are hungry are fed. And we see it all over the Bible. All over Scripture, we see that our God is about feeding hungry people. We see it through the Old Testament. Psalm 40, 146 says that the Lord upholds the cause of the oppressed and gives food to the hungry. Isaiah 58, God is revealing to his people what, what he requires of them. And he says this, he says, Is it not to share your food with the hungry and to provide the poor wanderer with shelter when you see the naked to clothe them and not to turn away from your own flesh and blood? And yes, we also see in the, the book of Leviticus, the, the book of Leviticus is widely known as the, the book that ruins people's plan to read the Bible in a year. But w within this book of, of laws it is this special concern for the hungry and the poor and the lowly. Listen to what it says in Leviticus 19. When you reap the harvest of your land, do not reap to the very edges of your field or gather the gleanings of your harvest. Do not go over your vineyard a second time or pick up the grapes that have fallen. Uh, but hear this, leave them for the poor and the foreigner, for I am the Lord your God. God's mission and God's heart is to see that the hungry are fed. And we see this mission being lived out in the life and ministry of Jesus of Nazareth. Because in fact, it was the first sermon that he ever gave, according to the Gospel of Luke, is that he stood up in the synagogue and he read a scroll from the prophet Isaiah. And he, he talked about proclaiming good news to the poor and release for the prisoner, liberation for the oppressed. And in one of his fam most famous teachings in Matthew 25, he says that whatever you did for the least of these, you did for me. And it was this concern for the poor and the hungry that was advanced by, by the early church. We see in Acts chapter 6, the, the church appoints and elects deacons to serve the church. And they did that um, to ensure that food was distributed properly. And in particular, they wanted to make sure that the most vulnerable in their midst, widows and orphans, were not being neglected. So, church, when we, see, when we consider the whole witness of Scripture, we see just how close this is to the heart of God. We just see how, we see how serious God is about feeding hungry people. Give us today our daily bread. Church, we cannot pray that prayer. We cannot pray that prayer with any integrity if we do not have a concern for the poor, the lowly, and the vulnerable of this world. So when we offer this prayer at the throne of God, we are praying on behalf of a hungry world. You know, perhaps the, the most famous story about God feeding hungry people is the gospel account of Jesus feeding the 5,000 with just a few loaves of bread and a few fish. And you might remember that in that story, Jesus sees the crowd and he sees their hunger and he sees their, their weariness. And the disciples, they see it too. They saw the hunger of the crowds. And so they come to Jesus and they say, you know what, Lord, it's, it's getting late. And we're way out here in a remote place. We need to send all of these people away. We need to send them to the nearby town so that they can get food for themselves. And if you remember, Jesus looks at them and says, no. He says, no, you. You give them something to eat. You see, Jesus and the disciples, they, they both saw a crowd of hungry people. 
And both Jesus and the disciples wanted to do something about it. Right? They wanted to help. They both wanted to ensure that these hungry people were fed. But the difference between Jesus and the twelve was this. The difference is that Jesus believed that what they had was enough to share. That was the difference. Jesus believed. He was convinced that they had enough to share. And in fact, they had more than enough. And it turns out he was right because when all was said and done, after all the hungry were fed, the Bible says that they had 12 baskets of leftovers um, when all was said and done. So the disciples, they looked at those loaves and those fishes and, and in their minds, they were just living in this narrative of scarcity. They just didn't have enough. That was the issue for the disciples. It wasn't as if they didn't want to help. That it wasn't a, a lack of desire. They were not indifferent to the hunger of the crowds. But they just didn't believe that they had enough. You know, you and I, we are well aware and we are mindful of the, of the great needs that exist in this world and around our country and in our city. And since March of 2020, we have seen these needs only become greater and greater. And yet we exist within this culture of just excess and overconsumption. And we too are, are tempted to live in this narrative of scarcity. We wonder whether or not we have enough. We wonder whether or not we have enough to share. And yet Jesus commands us to pray, Father, give us today. Give us today our daily bread. And in praying these words, we bring before him the needs of a tired and hungry and weary world. Asking of our Lord, Father, how can I, Father, how can I be the answer to someone's prayer? That out of my abundance, how can my life be used to make sure that someone else is fed? The church, may God grant us the faith to believe that we not only have enough, but enough to share. May our Lord provide bread for those who have none. And for those of us with bread, may he give us the hunger for justice. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's stand together as one body, as one church, and let's uh, do as Jesus commanded us. Let's pray these words together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
so often looks like bad news that we can come together as a family of faith and sing of the goodness of God. To remember that God holds this world in his sovereign love. To remember that there is hope and power and salvation in the name of Jesus. And now friends, as we close our, our service together, I just want to once again thank you for spending part of your Sunday uh, with us. For those of you here in person, for those of you online as well, we are so grateful and uh, if you would like to, to visit um, more, for a, if you'd like to have some time of fellowship, we'll be out in the fellowship hall. There's some coffee and some snacks out there as well. And also, if you'd like to worship our Lord today through the giving of tithes and offerings, which is something that we do as an act of worship to build up the kingdom of God, there is an offering basket in the back where you can leave your offering on your way out of the sanctuary. And now, friends, on this day and forevermore, I pray that you would know the love of God, that you would know the grace, the mercy, the compassion of our Lord Jesus. May you always know the presence, the fellowship of his Holy Spirit. And let all God's people say, Amen.